Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to continue with the example I work today because I started in the morning and I've been in and out doing some other stuff but this is what was on my mind all day basically. So in the last video I show you guys like one example using Blazor WebAssembly, XPO from Developer Express and SQLite. And the example was compiling .NET 6 because in .NET 6, you can include native references. So that allows us to use SQLite inside of the browser, basically. So there was a small problem. And it was that um, each time that you start the application, you start a new process. And there was no way to keep the state because the database lives inside of the process, basically in memory. So you need to save it in the local browser storage and then restore it. So I did basically those modifications and I update the readme of the repository. So for example, these are the new things. I'm not using the extensions anymore, the XPO extensions for ASP.NET Core because I need to be able to initialize the database myself, uh, not at the beginning when you build the services, but at other time, basically, like in the page initializing. So here, I guess I should name, should rename myself to best practice number seven, because I always tell about this exact number. So this is the best practices article that shows you how to initialize the database. Let's see, number seven is basically this code. You will see it inside of the application. Then I add the, added the functionality to save the database, to take it out of the browser so you can download it and check it. So I got that from, from another example from Steve Sanderson. Um, so here is the code, basically it's in, and fiddle so you can like download and play with it. So um, I basically use this exact code to download the database. And then I use Blazor um, local storage. So, because I need to get the memory database and save it somewhere and then restore it. So let's see how the code changes. Um, okay, so let me close all of this. And let's go the program. So here the program I, I commented out the, the extensions. So I can initialize the database myself, like XPO myself in this case. Um, then um, I add a new get package to the project which is this one. And let's continue. Uh, that's for the project and for the program. Then I include an empty database just to have like a placeholder to, to it's empty basically. Um, so the first time you run the application, if there is no database in memory, uh, we read this embed resource. See, it's an embed resource. And then we save it into the memory file system that Blazor provides, like Blazor Web Assembly provides. And then we initialize XPO over this. And you can see that in the index page, in the code behind. So, for example, the unit of work, I'm not injecting that anymore as a service, it's just a property here. And the on initialize, I use uh, Blazor local storage to check if there is an item called DB that is a byte array. If this is null, it means that this is the first time I'm running the application. So I write the bytes that I get from the resource, this resource, uh, basically. So I write the file. And in the opposite case, if this item, is not null, 
it means that I can use these bytes to recreate the database. So that's what I'm doing in here. And then I go to init XPO. So here is like, again, best practice number seven. And I don't need to explain this code because I have done it like thousands of times, I think. So we need XPO. And then um, basically we have a unit of work available and we can um, create a, the collection of users or the list of users. So that's basically how the flow changes. And now let's see the download file method. So basically what this does is get the local file, the local database file, get this as, as a byte array. And then we invoke the code that I show you from Steve Sanderson to download the bytes and save it as a, as a file basically. And um, then I added this method also. This method frees the file all the time. Every time that we commit a session of XPO, and we save it to the local storage or saving the complete database to the local storage because otherwise it will be in memory um, and i guess there should be a way to to see if the windows is being closed or something so so we can like at that moment save the database but i didn't want to make this more complicated so the flow is really straightforward like this um, so basically now that every time that i save the user um i commit the transaction and and i save it basically here is the the code for that so that's pretty much it so let me show you this running i usually go to sleep really really early because i wake up really really early also like basically like midnight but today this uh, didn't let me sleep so okay here you can see that i started the application and it already contains some state i added more people from our team because they always tell me like jose you didn't include me in the example that you did for the video so here is everyone um okay so see when i run it the first time is this is not the first time I have been running it before but it restored the state so let let me add a few more persons I'm going to add myself here and I'm going to add Javier also and I'm going to add my brother um, okay so see now uh, and like in the other video when I open this in another tab it didn't like save the state, like it started the process again. But here, that is already saving the browser, like in the browser cache, that file. So see, it keeps the state between times that you run it. And well, um, let me open this in Chrome. And you will see something super nice. I think all browsers do this. That is depending on the options that you have. Um, but you can install it as a like local copy. Here, this is another browser basically. So it doesn't keep the state. It should be the same browser. I was using Edge, and this is Chrome. So that's why there is nothing there at the beginning. So, but anyway. Here you have the this uh, link here, if you want to install it. Oh no, it's already installed, so I will try to open that. I hope it's the same version because it means that I installed it before. Um, so let's see, this will be Oche and Javier. And now I have an icon in, in the desktop so see here i have the icon like as a local application running and i hope if this is the same version that it will open again 
oh, I have no icons right now because I deleted and thought I uninstall it, but let's go back to the browser and execute it again here. I guess I will have to find out um, how to uninstall a progressive web app that is already installed. But see, it keeps the state. So this is something that is really, really nice. And well, let's download the database. So here is my DB2. So let me open DB Beaver. And let me create a new connection. I should be, I should have not done this today. I have less things to do, but sometimes when you get an idea and like there is no way to do something else. So let's create a new connection. This is going to be SQLite. Let's browse for the file. So this is the one. See, it's 10.38 uh, PM. And this connection is working, finish. And ah, I didn't name it, so uh, that's why it shows like this. But let's check tables. And see, that's me. And there is Javier also. So, so far, so good. Like I wanted to keep the state when I finish the other video. And this is the easiest way. There's, there must be another way, but I just wanted to make a few lines that makes it work and makes it like keep the state in general. So this same principle will work for identity framework also. So now I know that I should have done some other things today and I still need to do them. But maybe when I have the time, I will include the sync framework to work in the browser. So this will basically allow you to create somehow like a mobile application that is not summary that you can install in any OS basically, and also in mobile, and is able to do offline work and offline synchronization. So that through XPO and the same framework, of course. So this is really exciting. Like Net6 is like, uh, I was kind of bored of Net5 and Net Core 3. Like, I mean, I like them, but after a while, it's not, there's nothing new there, but this, this is truly amazing. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you have any doubt, you, you can write me in the comments, like, or send me an email. Like, my email is like uh, in a lot of the presentations. So that's it. Um, also, the repository is updated. You can download this example. It includes the C, um, the CDLL, like the SQLite DLL compiled uh, in C language and everything that you need to run. Everything that I did here, you can do by downloading the, the repo and just compile it and run it. These do require to have Net6 Net on your computer. And this will not run on Visual Studio 2019. You need to have Visual Studio 2022. But that's it. So thanks for watching and see you guys on the next video.